I also um, want to first note that we do have a quorum. I can see that, but we will do a roll call. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye, good morning, everybody. And morning. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Good morning. Um, I am hearing a lot of the noise, so what I will try to do is mute everyone and for my fellow commissioners and participants, we'll, um, you'll just have to unmute yourselves. Thanks. Just because of the bells that are ringing as everybody joins. Uh, we appreciate uh, so much of our staff joining today's meeting as they have been joining throughout this process. <clears throat> I wish to first note that given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global corona, coronavirus pandemic, Governor Trump has issued an order to provide limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of individuals interested in attending our public meetings. In keeping with the guidance provided, this uh, meeting will be conducted using col uh, remote collaboration technology. And if for any reason there's a technical problem, um, with our remote connection, we will have an alternative conference line established immediately on our website. <clears throat> so thank you for joining. I bring to order this public meeting number 298 of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission on April 23rd at 10 a.m. Before we get started, um, I want to just make a, um, give a few remarks. In keeping with a mandate issued by the state, the commission extended temporary closures of the state's three casino properties on April 3rd until May 4th. <clears throat> we will revisit operational status before May 4th, as we noted in our prior meeting, as we continue to take our lead from the Baker Polito administration and public health officials. They are providing guidance based on their assessment of critical health benchmarks. As you can imagine, at this time, we're unable to provide a definitive timeline for the safe resumption of operations. However, we do want all to understand and appreciate that we are fully engaged with our licensees in preparation for a new normal and the myriad of considerations for a safe and sustainable reopening process. What we do know for sure is it won't be as simple as un unlocking the doors and switching the lights back on. Countless organizations around the globe are devising plans for post-pandemic operations. These are, as we have said, uncharted waters. I appreciate that when MGM and Penn National have been industry leaders in this discussion, engaging top public health experts to establish best practices and preparing plans to ensure that patrons and employees feel safe. It is also helpful that Wynn and MGM are able to share valuable insight based on relevant experience in Macau. Recently, Wynn uh, CEO Matt Maddox issued a 23-page report that detailed a health and sanitation program for the Las Vegas property. It outlined many critical requirements, including physical distancing, meticulous <clears throat> cleaning procedures, PPE for guests and patrons, and of course, reduced occupancy. As MGM and Penn also publicly noted, plans understandably continue to evolve as new information and data becomes available. The Commission certainly recognizes that these plans will vary from state to state and will unroll at various stages. And when the time is right, the Commission and our licensees will likely have the benefit of lessons learned and will certainly have the benefit of strong data-driven state and local leadership. I think it's also worth emphasizing that whatever the plans are, they will require a robust public education campaign for customers and employees. Right now though, the focus remains on staying home to stop the spread and flatten the curve. But as we think about looking toward the next phase, whenever that may be, there will be no shortage of logistics to consider. And I appreciate our licensees' continued commitment to health and safety. 
and to all on the front line, our dedicated medical personnel and all of those who are supporting their efforts. And of course, all who are ensuring our <clears throat> supply line. We again express our gratitude and I think I can say that for all of my fellow commissioners. And likewise, we can thank our staff the MGC team, you've been amazing in your meaningful engagement, and continued commitment to one another. And we thank you for also being responsible and doing your part by staying at home. And with that, we'll move right into our business today. We have uh, quite a few minutes to approve. Commissioner Stebbins, please. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, colleagues. Um, first, I want to give a special thanks to Shara Bedard. Uh, who's been great in helping pull these minutes together from the various meetings we've had over the past month. Um, I'll begin with the approval of the March 20th, 2020 meeting minutes. Those are in your packet. I would move their approval subject to any typographical errors or any other non-material changes. Are there any questions or edits, Enrique? Commissioner Zuniga. I was just gonna uh, second that motion. Okay. Any questions, edits? All right. We'll do our roll call. Commissioner Cameron. Oh, Commissioner Cameron, I think folks just need to um, unmute. I'm sorry. And uh, Commissioner O'Brien, the same. Uh, so, aye. Thank you. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. And I vote. Yes, as well. Thank you. Five zero. Commissioner Stebbins. Sure. The next item uh, is approval of minutes from the March twenty fifth, twenty twenty meeting. Uh, those were in your packet. I would move their approval again, subject to any typographical changes or any other non-material matters. And I will second that. Any edits, comments? Excellent. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. I vote yes. Thank you, 5-0, sure. Okay, the next uh, package of minutes is from the April 3rd, 2020 meeting. Uh, I would move their approval, again, subject to any typographical changes or any other non-material matters. Second. Any questions, comments, edits? Excellent. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. And I vote yes, 5 0. And the last set of minutes for this uh, meeting are the minutes from the April 9th, 2020 meeting. I would again move their approval subject to any typographical errors or any other non material changes. Second. Are there any questions or comments or edits? I have one question. I'm sorry to throw off our, our, um, our batting average. On page four, um, we, perhaps you can help me with this. I'm wondering about the um, one statement under the 10.57 AM. It says, um, paragraph, it says, uh, there was a discussion around the need to reassess the commission's fiscal priorities Licensees will receive the benefit of the full five million assessment. Is that, a, is that what we intended to say? Derek, did you see that line? I did see that. I did say that line, Madam Chair. And I think I can work on getting some light language to Shara um, to update that because what we did was we um, gave back $2.1 million. The only re reference to 5 million was to assess the full amount of the racehorse development fund requirement. Um, I'm not racehorse, public health trust fund. Um, so I can get some revised language that, um, that talks about the monthly distribution, the monthly um, cash flow request for the quarterly assessment, as well as fully implementing the public health trust fund 5 million. Because if I understand correctly, we're actually requiring them to pay that full amount without any cost mitigation. All right, Correct. so that's good. Uh, does that make sense, Commissioner Zuniga? Yeah, I remember that to be the, the discussion that the relief was only going to be, if if at all, just in terms of timing. Um, you know, but, but prior to the but prior to the fiscal year. 
Right, and all the rest, I think, um, does address that. It was just that particular line that I wondered about. Okay, excellent. If we could have that um, friendly amendment, I don't know uh, how we address that, Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, we can make that. We can make that clarification. Um, we can send around an update if anybody's interested in seeing the language. But um, I, I think that clarifies the statement, as Commissioner Zuniga and uh, Director Lennon pointed out. And can we can, can we proceed then? Um, yes. So do I have a? So we have a second already. I'm sorry. Thanks, Eileen. Um, then, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner Gray. Aye. Commissioner Zunica? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. And I vote yes, thank you. Thank you, Shara, for all your work and Commissioner Stebbins on, uh, on addressing all the minutes with our video recordings. We really appreciate your staying on top of all of them, so thank you. Of course. Um, moving on to our administrative update. Item number three on the agenda, Interim Executive Director Wells. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Madam Chair. Good morning, members of the Commission. Uh, given last meeting's extensive rundown on our remote working operations, I won't go over all of those again and reiterate those. I will uh, note that I do continue to be impressed uh, with the staff and the volume of the work um, that is being accomplished during this time. and. Uh, the utilization of the our remote capabilities really has been impressive. So uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the staff and the IT department for uh, just making that happen uh, and continuing to work during these times. Uh, and as the chair has already referenced, uh, you know, I do also want to reiterate that we do have a real focus on the process of reopening the casinos at the appropriate time. And I'd just like to describe, we're looking at basically in two buckets, in two different areas. One is, you know, what do we as regulators need to ensure to protect the integrity of the games and the operations before reopening? Because uh, we did shut down all the casinos right at once and we'll have to reopen them again. As you know from before, uh, opening casino is an extensive regulatory process. Fortunately for us, uh, our gaming agent management, uh, Bruce Burke and up from me, Bruce Band and Burt Kane, uh, they've experienced in this area because they were involved in the reopening of, of the casinos in Atlantic City after Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so we're in good shape in this area. The checklists are, are done as far as being able to ensure once we reopen the, the doors in that area of uh, integrity of the games and integrity of the operations, we will be in good shape. Uh, the second bucket, the second area we're looking into, obviously, is uh, how do we and the casinos address specific concerns regarding COVID-19. So as the chair had mentioned, uh, we will be coordinating with government officials, health experts, and also determining best practices from other jurisdictions to see what we really need to do to ensure the safety of staff, patrons, and employees uh, at the casino. So that is an ongoing process as time goes by and we see how uh, things evolve in uh, our state and nationwide and in, across the world. What we learn from that will be applied to uh, how we go about this process. So staff is focused on that, continual meetings and continual conversation. So aside from that, um, I, I have no further updates. I don't know if the commission has any questions, but uh, again, I'm impressed with the staff. They're ready to go um, and they're continuing to work. Questions for Karen Amike? Yeah, thank you. I am um, just following up on um, a point you made, uh, Madam Chair. Um, the, uh, both um, uh, MGM and, um, and Wynn have uh, experience in, in these sort of um, public health um, operations in the, in the age of the coronavirus because of their Macau operations. So uh, the question uh, to Karen, I, I um, I take it we are learning those lessons as well uh, from our conversations with the uh, licensed team. Yes, and we've got a team and actually we have a meeting set up tomorrow for a group to be looking at what are the lessons learned in Macau because they did close operations, they did reopen, what worked, what didn't work. So we'll be working on that as well. Great, so I look forward to learning more about that uh, at a later time, maybe, you know, 
Hold on. We, I, I, we can have um, Commissioner Wells keep us updated on an ongoing basis. The team will be looking at it, but perhaps it can be incremental reports. If that's helpful on your end. Sure, Okay. Anything else? Okay, that's all I have for number three. Okay, and so no other questions for Karen at this time? All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much and thanks to the entire team. Uh, moving on to item number four, a director of research and responsible gaming, Mark Vanderlinden. Good morning. Mark, can you hear us? Are you first? I've had some funny internet connection here, so I hope I don't freeze up on you. Um, so uh, first I wanted to point out a uh, type of, uh, typo in uh, the memo that I sent out. Um, I'm going to discuss with you a report request by MGM and Encore Boston Harbor to delay the launch of uh, Play My Way um, until September 1st, 2021, not September 1st, 2020, as it states in, in the memo that I, I submitted to you earlier this week. Um, so, so with that understanding, um, just I would like to just quickly run through uh, the what Play My Way is and the request by uh, a shared request by MGM Springfield and Encore Boston Harbor. Um, so as you know, Play My Way is an innovative budgeting tool designed to allow Massachusetts casino patrons the ability to monitor the amount of money they spend on electronic uh, gaming machines, slot machines, and inform their decisions to continue or to stop their play. Um, it's a first of the kind in the United States. It helps players make decisions about their gambling um, and to monitor and understand in real time. Um, Play My Way is, is um, a budgeting tool that's on slot machines. Currently, it's uh, only at Plain Ridge Park Casino. Um, and it was launched in 2015 as a pilot. Um, as uh, in 2018, there was a decision by uh, the commission um, and our licensees, um, MGM and Encore Boston Harbor, that they would also adopt Play My Way um, after the initial trial period at, at Plain Ridge Park Casino. Um, rather than regulation, we entered into an MOU with those two uh, companies. On October 1st of 2018, um, the, the uh, MOU stipulated that it would be launched no later than September 1st, 2020. Um, since October 2018, um, both of those operators, in addition to the Gaming Commission and IGP, have worked diligently and in good faith towards the completion and launch of, of Play My Way. Um, however, on September 27th, Interim Executive Director Karen Wells received a joint memo from MGM and Encore, which I uh, attached to your packet, requesting a delay to launch until September 1st, 2021, um, citing the need to postpone capital expenditure projects due to the COVID-19 outbreak and the resulting suspension of opera operations. Um, CIO um, and uh, I spoke with MGM and um, Encore on September 10th. Um, we wanted to just receive a little bit more information about the, their request and the timeline that they laid out. Um, they provided quite a lot uh, more detail just in terms of what the cost is and what their intention to roll play my way out is out. And um, following that conversation, we we're both in full agreement um, that we should work with them um, cooperatively uh, um, and accept that September 1st, 2021, but recognizing that perhaps um, as we continue to work with them, depending on how, uh, how they resume operations, that perhaps it, it may be um, before that. So um, I, I come before the commission to uh, just see if you have any feedback and, and receive uh, approval. Um. Yeah, no, I, um, 
I think this is a very reasonable uh, request. It's both, uh, given the circumstances, a one in which we uh, we react to the operational reality around uh, the implementation, but also is uh, a cost mitigation uh, into you know, managing the cash as, as these uh, licensees manage their cash operations during this period. So I think it only makes um, makes sense to grant this. Um, there's a lot of um, that goes into um, putting these uh, these together needs to be tested on the floor and and approved by uh, by the labs and none of that is really uh, you know possible in this environment um, even though uh, you know there could be some some development but uh, I think uh, and I agree with the recommendation and I think it's reasonable. Other questions for uh, Director Vanderlinden? Just just a clarification, Madam Chair. Um, Director Vanderlinden, um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Zuniga and your recommendation that this is reasonable and that we should approve this. Um, I think you gave a September date that you had a conversation with the licensees, and I, I just I think you probably meant an April, early April conversation, right? Uh, is that correct? Yes, that's right. So we had a conversation with them on April 10th. So okay, great. Earlier this month. Perfect. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Yeah. If I just may add, I, I really do feel uh, that both operators and IGT um, have really been working hard in, in the development um, and pushing this forward. And, um, and I, I, I want to emphasize the good faith um, and diligent work that, that has been happening um, since that MOU was signed. Great, nice to hear, thank you. Yes. And I also appreciate that they gave us this much advance notice. Uh, you know, during, this is dated March 27th, but, you know, the fact is, is that in the midst of all of this, they, they did prioritize this to make sure to issue a joint letter to us. So um, we appreciate that heads up. Uh, any further questions for Director Van Linden? <clears throat> and do we need a vote on this? You would like a vote? Yes. I, I would like a, a vote. It's um, the MOU um, has Katrina and I as the signatories, but given the the role of, of the five commissioners in this entire project, I think just the, the affirmation that this is a significant change to it um, and a, a vote would, I would appreciate. So that's really important to acknowledge. Um, you know, given that the MOU is executed by Katrina and Mark, uh, probably a formal vote isn't needed, but I appreciate that this is a request from the two licensees. So if we have, unless I hear uh, any kind of suggestion contrary to us voting, if I have a motion, that would be great. Certainly, Madam Chair, I move that the commission allow Encore Boston Harbor's request and MGM's request to delay the implementation of the Play My Way play management system until no later than September 1, 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and resulting suspension of operations as discussed here today. I second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, we'll do a roll call. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. I vote yes, thank you. Thank you. Five zero. Thanks for the good work. And again, thank you to both uh, Seth and Jackie on that effort. Um, moving on now to item number five from our legal division from General Counsel Grossman. Mr. Grossman. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. So there was a matter. Uh, this is uh, the licensing and registration matter. Uh, and there was an issue brought to uh, detected by the staff uh, was brought to our attention by the licensees relative to the terms of the employee and vendor licenses and registrations essentially there are some individuals and entities whose licenses and registrations um, are expiring or set to expire during the period of this temporary closure and so for a variety of reasons the ex uh, the submission of renewal applications may not be feasible at the moment 
but the resulting expirations could lead to some administrative difficulties on the back end of the process. So as a matter of equity and efficiency, we set out uh, to remedy this issue, come up with a proposal to remedy this issue. Uh, and uh, Bill Curtis, who's on the line here, uh, I can see him down below, uh, will walk through the issue um, for you, as well as to offer a recommendation to address the matter. There are a variety of options that are available for your consideration, but there's one in particular that we believe will be best to address the issue uh, in the most cost-effective and uh, efficient manner. So, uh, Mr. Curtis, if you will, um, uh, if I could just turn it over to you and ask you to run through the issue and the recommendation. Good morning. Good morning, Licensing Manager Curtis. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Commissioners and Attorney Grossman. Thank you for the great intro. <laughs> As Todd mentioned, we were contacted by um, a few of the licensees um, with the main question revolving around employee renewal. Some of the folks that are up for renewal right now um, are running into some problems to be able to complete their renewal. Uh, as of early as yesterday, as late as yesterday, we received an email from one individual who said she didn't have a computer, so she wasn't able to complete her renewal. She was a little nervous about being able to return to work if her license expired. Um, we've had a few other folks um, that, that have run into the same problem as well. Some individuals are having problems obtaining their documents from uh, various uh, federal agencies um, in order to submit their renewal in a timely and uh, manner. So what we did was we contacted the developer to ask them about um, LMS, which is the licensing management system as everyone knows, so I don't know. That's how individuals apply for a license and a registration with us. Only. Um, they gave us four proposals, and um, we really are very happy with. We'd, we'd like to recommend one proposal to you. And that would be um, they would allow a grace period to these employees. So anybody's license that was going to expire in, in April or May or June, however long this pandemic is going on, we would be able to, uh, with your approval, offer them a grace period. What it would be is the developer would add a function to our licensing management system, which we already have in a, in a, a very uh, different um, function. This would allow the folks to get some time to file their renewal. If, they, if we did not allow this grace period, these licenses and registrations would expire. Folks wouldn't be able to turn to work when the casino is open. And once the casinos did open, they would have to apply for an entirely new license or registration. That would cause, cause some hardship on um, us as well as the licensees. With us, we would have folks with two different records in LMS. And I think that would be a little difficult for the licensing staff in order to process the application, as well as the investigations unit to conduct a, a, a deep investigation on these folks and not being aware that they might have another LMS record. So that would be the hardships on us. The hardships on the, the, um, the casino would be that they would have to issue all new credentials to folks because license numbers would change as well as expiration dates would change. So they would have to um, go into their databases and, and recreate numbers as well as um, expiration dates and also these individuals might not even be able to work because their license application would still be pending. So that would be the first option. And this, the number one option um, to allow for the grace period, um, it can be regulated by the commission. So we can control that. We can give them either, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And this function can be used again if we run into this problem. So um, that was the first um, option. Second, second option would be a direct database expiration date update. But that, the developer would have to um, create a custom database SQL script. That would take some time. There's very limited control over that. This is something that we could only use one time only, and there'd be no history of tracking. And as the folks know that use um, LMS, um, it, it's a great tool because it's very historical. Whoever touches a record, we do have um, a fingerprint on that, so we're able to know who does what if, at any time. The third option would be the expiration date update through a custom program. Again, the developer would have to write a custom program. 
Um, we may be possible to target the specific individuals, and it would require quite a bit of testing, and it would take quite a bit of time to implement. The fourth option would be an addition, addition of the grace period functionality. Um, this would allow users who have been previously licensed or registered to apply for their renewal after the license registration has expired. Um, this would apply to everyone, um, but it needs a requirement phase, which what that means is a developer would have to sit with us and find out our requirements. This would take a little bit of time um, and it would need extensive testing. So if we went with option two, three, four, by the time the developer was able to roll out um, the, the scripts or the new functionality, folks' licenses could expire, registrations could expire. So we would run into the issue of having multiple records again. Sorry about that. So that's with the employees. Um, with the vendors, the vendors, it's a little bit different. Um, Non-gaming vendors, um, they're not in the licensing management system. That's something that the licensing division um, works on manually. So um, a few of their folks as well have reached out to, vendors have reached out to us. They're pretty concerned about, you know, are they gonna be able to go back to work selling their, uh, their goods and services to the casinos when they're open if their licensing has expired. So we try to take a little bit of a hardship off of them as well. Um, I, I, I believe it, it's, it's um, a theory that we should um, give to these folks as long as you know you, you the commission doesn't approve it um, now our recommendation um, we sat down attorney Grossman and I sat down and um, we would recommend that you allow um, if the shutdown is 60 days we allow these folks a grace period of 60 days to submit their renewals to us um, but again we can change that any time. We could change that to 30 days. We could change it to 90 days. I mean, again, this is the fastest tool that the developer can do for us. And it's also multiple times. So if we ever run into another problem like this again, we've already got a fix. So I'd appreciate any questions that anyone has. Questions for Bill. Um, yes, hi there. Um, Licensing manager Curtis, how are you this morning? Um, yeah, listen, thank you for laying out those four options. Um, and certainly uh, the option that you recommend uh, in conjunction with the legal team um, makes the most sense for a number of reasons. And um, also, you know, what you, you pointed out the effect this would have on um, the licensees. Uh, the MGC, uh, I think the most um, critical piece you pointed out, though, is for us not to be a barrier for folks to get back to work. I think that, that piece is really critical. Um, and the option that you're recommending certainly um, uh, ensures that that won't happen, that there will be this period and people, as soon as it's safe, can return and uh, be able to make a living. So thank you for laying that out. And um, I, I agree with your recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner. Yep, Madam Chair, I'd also um, like to echo uh, Commissioner Cameron's comments um, and also thank um, our CFAO Lennon and uh, Director Wells for their leadership on this issue also. Um, you know, I, I think this makes perfect sense. Uh, we don't want anybody having to scramble to find their paperwork if and when we get a reopening date. and just to, just to offer a little bit of uh, stress relief to small businesses who have so much on their hands right now, uh, as well as to um, you know, gaming employees who also might find themselves furloughed at this point. I, I think this is, uh, it makes sense and you know, just offers some relief and um, provides a little bit of relief of stress uh, to an individual who's trying to think of not only everything else they have on their plate, but, oh my gosh, how do I renew my license? How do I renew my registration? Just to, to ease them of that burden, I think makes a lot of sense at this time. Commissioner O'Brien or Commissioner Zuniga, any questions for licensing manager Curtis? 
Uh, I don't have any questions, but just to reiterate, <laughs> I wanted to thank him for his time and uh, Attorney Grossman's time yesterday for going a deep dive on this for me. Um, it, it makes option one makes the most sense for a lot of reasons. Um, efficiency, ease of reuse, if we need to do this again, as we cycle in and out potentially. Um, and he also gave me details and assurances in terms of the integrity of LMS, in terms of who has the ability to actually implement the grace period. Uh, and I was satisfied with the um, protections that are in place. So to me, this solution is the most cost-effective ease of use and also preserves the integrity of the system. So I, I think it's a good idea and I just wanted to thank them for their time to walk me through it yesterday. Commissioner Sunika. Yeah, thank you. Um, perhaps, um, uh, you think, think, thanks again, I agree with the recommendation, but let me um, uh, perhaps uh, talk a little bit about how I came to understand um, this issue that uh, maybe is good to state for, for the record. Uh, there's a mechanical issue with our, with our CMS, which we're going to fix with a small, um, small cost consideration for our uh, developer um, because, uh, because of the upcoming expiration for certain people who've been licensed. But there's also a policy question as I think of um, how we our last discussion on uh, on the annual on the year uh, uh, period that people have to cash their tickets uh, and, and the policy parallel here is that we are not necessarily extending the validity of people's licenses as they expire we're only allowing for them uh, an opportunity to fill out the renewal application on our system at a later time, which, which we call this grace period, which we can modify as needed. But the licenses, if, if I'm correct, uh, this is a question really for Bill and for Todd, uh, the licenses will continue to expire on a rolling basis um, and people, uh, because they don't have access necessarily everybody, to uh, either the documentation or uh, you know internet or what have you, um, we are uh, fixing uh, with this small patch our uh, licensing management system to allow them to uh, renew with pre-populated fields, if you will, so that we don't get a duplication of records and, and the like. So is that is that a fair statement in general? We're not changing the policy. People's licenses will continue to expire as, you know, uh, when they were issued uh, three years ago or what have you, depending on the license. Uh, but they will have an opportunity to renew that uh, license uh, as, we, uh, as we continue. Yeah, Bill, Bill go ahead. Um, what it would allow, um, if I understand your question correctly, um, what it would allow, it would, it would let these, it would, the folks would have the ability to renew their license, but only be a small um, few. Um, right now, I mean, I have figures that, you know, it's about 20 people as by, by the end of May. It would only affect these few people and them, them only. Everyone else would still have to renew their license to the proper manner. They wouldn't get any um, extended time because um, they should be able to once the casinos open up and, and folks are back in and the HR departments are in um, operation to offer some assistance to these individuals, um, those folks should be able to submit their renewal in a timely manner. These folks, like I said, at the most, I, I believe it's like 20 people at the most, they're the only ones that would be affected because they don't have the capability to um, submit their renewal because their license would expire. But it's only for a sec select few, it's not for did that answer the question? Yeah, and Bill, so the, the act, these few, their licenses won't expire. That's the, the purpose of this, is that they would keep the same record. It's not that they have one license and then have uh, a, a gap and then have to get another license. Their license won't expire. They get a grace period to renew, but it's only that select few. The issue on the license term is that on the back end, so if their license would have expired in, on, say, April 15th of 2023. It still expires on April 15th of 2023. We're not pushing back the license time on the back end. You're just extending it right now 
So their license does not expire while these casinos are shut down and they have time to get their documents in order. Is that correct? Um, unfortunately, they can't, they can't finagle the date um, because in the script that was written, written for the program, it allows for either a five-year license or a three-year license. Right. Um, so if we allow them the additional, say, 30 days to submit their renewal, um, 30 days would be added onto the back end of their license. Okay. Um, if, if we try to play with the expiration date, um, that would really conflict with other parts of the system. And um, there's no guarantee it would work as well as we don't even know if the system could crash if you try to play with 20,000 records to adjust everyone's um, expiration date. This would only affect um, the select few. Um, right. They would get so. I mean, we could go with a 30-day. Um, again, we can we can control the amount of time that we give to these folks to uh, the grace period to to submit their, their license. There's really no way to ratchet back the, the date because it's um, it's programmed into the system where folks either get a five-year license or, or um, a five-year renewal or um, excuse me, a five-year registration or a three-year license. <laughs> If, okay. I could just, uh, yeah. if I could just add a couple of uh, comments or questions. First off, it's my understanding, well, first off, I should say that I agree wholeheartedly with Commissioner Cameron that our goal is to make sure that, that our system doesn't create some kind of a barrier to getting back to work, and I, I am, appreciate that very much. Secondly, um, I also want to thank um, Bill and Todd for their time. Uh, I think we all have had the benefit of a, um, very helpful briefings in accordance with our open meeting law requirements. So thank you. Um, I also understand that the licensees themselves and through their HR department actually help the employees. Um, so it's not even so mechanical. Um, in other words, some will not have access to a computer, which you've acknowledged, but they also get the system in properly um, filling out their their license, um, you know, whether there's a language barrier or any other kind of a, a sort of misunderstanding or lack of clarity in terms of filling out the license or support given by the licensees. So um, the shutdown of operations really impacts the overall process. And your count right now, Bill, is 20 as of this month. You haven't been able to assess or have you? Um, how many will be in, in May and, and potentially June if the operations continue to be suspended. Is that right? Um, currently, Chair, there, there's, there's four for the month of April. Yeah. And there's um, 16 for mm -hmm. the month of May. Right. So it would reflect on 16 folks. So there's, I mean, I think it's a fair question to ask why are we, um, why do we need the technological fix if, could we possibly do it manually? But what happens is the expiration occurs in the system and they're out, correct? Correct, correct. I mean, we, we did have the function for legacy with a, um, a paper application, but um, if, they, if the individual didn't get that to us in enough time for us to um, upload it and, 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 and enter it that way, um, they'd run into the same problem again. I mean, the license would just expire. That's a problem. It, it, it's a hard date for it to expire. And the only thing that, that keeps the, um, the individual's license registration from expiring is successful submission of a renewal application. Uh, so one feeds off the other. I mean, when we developed the system, I mean, we never even, you know, thought about well, something like this to happen. Um, and I mean, it's just something that's just, I feel like it's a one-off and if it does happen again, um, the approval would be able to take care of it. Unfortunately, the folks would get a little extra time on their license, but you know we can control that. And if if we rolled out say thirty days, we can continue to give them an extra thirty days. So say that the casinos don't open up and people don't come back to sometime. Um, the folks in April, we don't come back to probably say June first. I'm going to throw that date out we're able to give them another grace period of till June 30th to submit their um, applicate their renewal application. So it's just not like a one-time fix. So we could, it, unfortunately it has to be in increments of months, not days. So if we were allowed them to have one month, which would be 30 days, 
at the onset, that would that would be great. And then if they weren't able to submit their renewal because of the closure, then we could give them an, an extra 30 days. But if they were open and they failed to submit their renewal, then they have to apply all over. I'm sorry, you broke up right on that last part. Um, if, 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 we were, if we were to give them um, a grace period of the 30 days, um, you know, uh, for the folks in April, we give them, we give them a grace period of 30 days. Um, and the casinos don't open up, the HR department doesn't open up until sometime in June. We could give them another 30 days to, to allow them to, to um, submit their, their um, renewal application because of the closure. But if it's because of they just didn't do it, we don't we don't have we don't have to allow them to have that extra thirty days. I understand. So sure. there's also a problem I think if you try to do it manually. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Bill. But you're that you have to close out the other file, and then you're going to have to open another file with another tracking number. So now you're going to have separate numbers for the same employees, which, in my view, also creates a risk that as you go through in years going forward, that you might have somebody looking at um, vetting this person and not having all the files that they really need. So to me, the manual um, actually creates a risk later on that I just don't think we need to take. We do yeah. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. Um, you know, that, that is the obvious question, why not just do it manually, but it does create that risk. And I thought that Todd and Bill explained that really well last, last week, uh, yesterday, I'm sorry. Excellent. Right. Um, other questions? Uh, Commissioner Zuniga, you were leaning in? Yeah, thank you. I, um, that's a HD uh, signal. Um, yeah, perhaps so. So just to, uh, to ratify perhaps the, the point I was uh, sort of talking to before, we are not, with this process, uh, nobody's getting an extension of their licenses. Their, 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 their renewal, uh, the renewal, the, the term of the licenses continue to be the same. Mm -hmm. what, what we are effectively doing is allowing for this uh, fix on the system to allow, uh, to, to, to implement this grace period for the renewal of the licenses. So whenever, whenever people, uh, licenses expire, uh, and it's going to happen on a rolling basis, uh, we have the ability to adjust these grace periods as they uh, manifest themselves, uh, as, the, as the closures continue or not. Um, we have the ability to react by extending this grace period to renew their licenses. But effectively, if they expire, they expired, they have to renew, and that's our process. Correct. Well said. Um, Bill, one just quick question is, is we get down to the end of the month um, and, and, and subject to uh, the commission's vote on this agenda item. Um, are you planning to create some type of email message or letter that would go out to everybody who, um, whose license or registration is coming up for renewal in the month of April to explain what our process will be? Um, sure. I, I, we could develop something like that, and we'll also send it to the HR department of each casino as well, because some of those folks um, will probably reach out to the HR, because there are some folks that are actually still in HR. Um, but sure, like we, we had one woman yesterday and we told her that we can walk through the process. Um, but yeah, sure, we can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just get um, some clarification on the memo? Because uh, I'm not sure if you're shifting, um, Bill, on the recommendation, but in the memo says staff is requesting that the length of the grace period equal the number of days that the gaming establishments are closed. So, um, Sorry, Chair. Um, with Commissioner Zuniga's concerns, I, I, I feel that since we're able to do it multiple times, I would say we roll it out in the shortest period, which would be 30 days. One month. Um, because if we, I mean, say we're at, say we're close, say they're close for 70 days, if we give them 90 days, um, I regret, I'd, I'd feel better that we're able to have that fingerprint as, as Commissioner O'Brien was um, concerned with. Uh, it was a great concern because I didn't even think of that. We'll be able to see, like it's a 30 day, and if we have to give them another 30 days, you'll see 30 days there again. 
Um, and there's only a select few that are able to do that. They have to be super users, and there's only two of us, um, myself and um, interim um, executive director of Bells. So we're the only two that have that capability to do that. But I, I would like to go back on my um, recommendation after listening um, to, and, and I'd like to recommend a 30 day, and I hope that Todd would agree with me, um, as well as Karen, um, because I just feel that, I think that's probably a little bit more of a safeguard, which I know some folks have a concern about. And at the same time, it will probably, you know, when the employee comes back, they should have enough time to be able to submit. But if they know they've got like a 60 day grace period, you know, sometimes people don't feel the need to submit their renewal right away or their application. Um, they just go, oh, well, you know, I'll get to it. They'll, they'll give me another extension. So if we have like, I mean, excuse me, grace period, if we have like a 30 day, I think that will kickstart um, the employee to, to file their when they're back work. Commissioners, Karen, any comments? I guess my question is, are you looking to amend what you're asking for? So the last sentence really would read um, that the length of the grace period would be um, executed in 30 day increments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Okay. I think that's reasonable. That seems reasonable, yeah. Okay, thank you. And so if the, if the closure then um, it ends up being more than 30 days or 60, we will then effectuate those increments. There will be another grace period and another grace period. Is that the thinking? Correct. And again, it's, I think 30 days is more manageable. And where we're able to use this tool numerous times, um, we could just, you know, if we see that the April folks aren't going to be able to get their, their renewals done by the end of May, we could give them that 30 days. Mm -hmm. Additional questions, comments? My, my one last question would be, um, should we be doing this in terms of months? Since it sounds like you said the system is doing months and not days. So should it be one month increments as opposed to 30 days? Um, yes, they can do it for one month, but they, uh, on their proposal, they wrote one month equals 30 days. Yeah, so 30, 60, 90. So 30 would be equivalent. Correct. Additional questions, comments? I do know that you're looking for a, a vote um, on this to get guidance. Commissioners, do I have a motion? So, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, I move that the commission approve the licensing division's request to institute a grace period for vendors and employees affected by the closure of the casinos due to the COVID-19 pandemic to file their license and registration renewals. The length of this grace period uh, will be executed in 30-day increments. Second. Further discussion, questions, comments? Barring none, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes, 5-0. Thank you. And thank you um, to licensing manager Curtis. As always, you do um, just a really detailed job in having us, helping us to truly understand your systems. And I know personally, I appreciate it so very much. So thank you. And to Mr. Grossman, thank you too for your assistance yesterday in uh, briefing me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, that's for 5A, and um, we have both, uh, we have uh, Mr. Grossman and uh, uh, Carrie Trelisi, Associate General Counsel, joining us on that discussion with the benefit of um, Commissioner O'Brien. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioners. I'll kick this one off again. I see uh, Ms. Teresi uh, down there as well. Um, it's always, of course, important for a regulator to be able to clearly identify the scope of its authority, but particularly in the event of an emergency situation. And it's similarly important, where possible, uh, for stakeholders to have a clear understanding of the regulator's views in that regard. So given the present circumstances, it seems prudent to take the time now to do just that relative to the Gaming Commission's authority. 
Ms. Teresi will introduce and discuss a set of uh, draft regulations for your consideration that get into the Commission's authority to act uh, in an emergency situation. Yes, so good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, so you have a memo and a draft of this regulation in your packet. Um, by way of background, we had started looking at this uh, in mid-March towards the outset of the pandemic. We'd started looking at the authority of the Commission to act in the event that the gaming establishments need to be closed for public health or safety reasons. And we found that the authority existed, but that it was spread out among various statutes and regulations in 23K and 205 CMR. <clears throat> so we drafted this regulation to compile and clarify the existing authority of the Commission to, uh, to act in an emergency situation. We've outlined in the reg some examples of what an emergency situation might include, um, things such as a declaration of a state or a national state of emergency or a natural disaster, but we've also noted that this list isn't intended to be all-inclusive. Uh, and we just want to be clear that this regulation doesn't create any new authority, it only clarifies and consolidates existing authority. So the regulation outlines the various authority of both the IEB and the Commission, which is found throughout Chapter 23K. Uh, the IEB has the authority to order a licensee to cease and desist particular activity or to suspend a gaming license in certain situations. Uh, if the IEB were to act in those instances, uh, the licensee would need to be provided with a hearing within seven days uh, before the Commission, uh, within seven days of that action. Uh, and then implicit in that, of course, is the, uh, the IAB's authority to um, work with the licensees to try to come to an agreement about any types of conditions that, uh, and operating conditions that might want to, they might want to impose in lieu of suspension of a license. The IAB also has authority to make recommendations to the commission for particular conditions to be imposed on the licensee uh, or for suspension of the license. And then of course the commission has very broad authority as you all know, um, the commission would have broad authority to issue orders or to establish procedures to be followed by the licensees as a condition of licensure. These could apply to gaming or non-gaming activities and could include closure of the casinos uh, in whole or in part. And in those instances, the licensees would need to be afforded a hearing before the commission before any action was taken. Uh, so this is kind of an overview um, of this regulation, and we wanted to open it up today for discussion among the commissioners and any questions that you might have. Uh, I'll, I'll just start off thanking Todd and Carrie. Um, we've been working on this and going back and forth um, for the better part of the last month. Um, and it really started with the current situation that we're in, but then it also got us thinking about, you know, things we haven't thought of yet and other circumstances that may put us in the situation of having to move with a fair amount of speed. Um, and so trying to consolidate the various sources of authority and how that would be executed, making it clear to uh, MGC staff, but also the licensees, what's the process, what's the procedure that's gonna be followed, et cetera. And then also specific to this going through reopening in terms of, um, I think to, to Carrie's point, um, how do you execute conditions on the license that are not simply you're open, you're closed. Um, and so this is the start of the dialogue to make sure that um, everything that we can think of at this point is in this, but with enough flexibility to go forward without having to be overly specific. Questions or comments for um, uh, Todd, Carrie, and Commissioner O'Brien on this matter. Um, I, I will interject right now um, <clears throat> when I, I would I would actually slightly correct Carrie because the legal team was looking at this authority well in advance of mid-March you revisited it with um, I think the, the hint of um, uh, from Commissioner O'Brien that it would be good timing to revisit it now uh, but we are asked early on what would be the commission's authority to suspend operations in light of the um, pandemic. <clears throat> and you did, uh, to uh, Mr. Grossman and Ms. Tracy, you did uh, an excellent job of briefing us. The statute, I think Commissioner O'Brien and I, because we were, we were 
put together on at this particular time, um, we, we looked at the statute and we felt confident that we could make solid arguments that the commission had full authority to unilaterally suspend operations. We were fortunate because after so much discussion with so many significant stakeholders, including the public health officials, our state leadership, our local leadership, and of course the licensees, that the licensees um, acknowledged the paramount importance of the safety of the employees, of the patrons, of our employees, and did not resist our desire to uh, temporarily suspend operations. So I appreciate very much that Commissioner O'Brien had the foresight to, to say, okay, we were there. We didn't have to rely on, the, as you say, putting it all together. And now with the, the idea of a regulation, uh, should in the future, something, let's hope it's never at the same scale of what we're looking at right now, but should there be an emergency or crisis that needs um, for, for us to think about one, um, licensees operations, we would have this in, in one place. So with that, I understand today, um, Todd, that you're not looking to um, vote on this, but rather have a discussion among us commissioners, and then uh, you would actually share the language with the, the licensees as well. Do you want to just go over that plan just um, again for uh, our record? Of course, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, the, the plan commissioners for today, uh, subject to your approval, of course, is that we have a full discussion. You gain a comfort with the proposal and then we circulate it to the licensees uh, for their review and comment as they have not had a chance to look at this and obviously it directly uh, impacts them. And that we do that before we commence with the promulgation process in which of course it opens up to a public hearing and what have you. And ultimately you could uh, determine to adopt these regulations by emergency at an upcoming meeting in a week or two weeks or even three. So prior to engaging in any of the formal regulation adoption process, it, it makes sense to me that we would allow the licensees to comment, to allow them to have some input before we move forward with this, to uh, ensure that uh, we understand uh, where they may uh, be coming from when it comes to our authority. Of course, we've laid out what we believe it to be. Uh, it would be helpful to know uh, whether uh, they agree or have a different view of it now, as opposed to uh, later on. So for those reasons, um, I'd recommend that um, at the conclusion of your discussion, if you do have that comfort level, that we just circulate it to the other license, uh, to the licensees for review and comment. And then we come back and whether it's a week or two weeks uh, to move forward. Commissioner Brian, did you want to add any other? Um corrections or anything, omissions that we no. have? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it makes sense um, given what we have right now for a timeline um, to do that. We always have, so for some reason, we need to move faster on that. We can deal with it at that time, but I think it's what uh, Attorney Grossman has outlined seems like the right process to follow. And I wasn't saying corrections for Mr. Grossman, it was corrections for me, um, so thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cameron, do you have any questions or comments? Um, again, this is an area where I benefited fully from a thorough explanation uh, with the legal team, really going through their thought process and how they came to um, to put these together and their, their consensus. So that was really helpful to me and um, uh, came away understanding fully and agreeing with this recommendation. I also agree with the recommendation that we get it out to the licensees in case there's something we haven't thought of. Excellent. Commissioner Stebbins? No, I um, also benefited from the uh, from the briefing by the legal team. Thank my colleague, Commissioner O'Brien, for her work and uh, agreed, you know, there doesn't seem to be anything pressing at this point that we can't put it out to our licensees and get their feedback on it before we uh, 
move ahead with the promulgation process. Excellent. Commissioner Zuniga? Yeah, um, no, but only to agree that uh, I think it's a it's a right approach. I think um, it was uh, clear, although in many different uh, sections, um, the authorities that we have are usually rather broad, um, and, and and we really appreciate it. I think the whole purpose of um, issuing regulations is to clarify uh, things in statutes, etc., and that's it's very relevant that they all be in one place. Uh, and I think this is good work. Um, I think, as you said, uh, Chair, there is so much that we've uh, accomplished in the past with just simply dialogue. A case in point, I, I might add, that Play My Way, which we discussed just uh, you know uh, minutes ago, uh, was the result of, of that dialogue without necessarily issuing regulation, which, which we always thought we have the ability to do or uh, uh, unilaterally um, and that uh, that's so that was the case in this closure past closure uh, but it's uh, but it's important to, um, to note what that authority is precisely for those uh, conversations uh, and I think uh, it's it's good to, to have in one place so I'm in agreement with all this. So for this um, item, you're not um, looking for a vote, but I think you are hearing a consensus from all that the next steps that you've outlined sound, sound um, reasonable and smart. So thank you. And again, thank you to Carrie um, for all her good work and, and Todd for your good work. And that work, again, was happening during a very trying time. And um, it was excellent work at the time. And now I think we're we're taking care of the for the future. This will be a good step for the future. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item number six. Do we have any commissioner updates or any statements or anything you want to say? I'll I'll go through the list and unless you want to do the lean in. Commissioner Cameron, are you all set? I am. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, nothing for me. Thanks. Okay, Commissioner Zunica. Uh, no, well, only only to note uh, something we haven't discussed uh, here, but it's been uh, um, widely uh, reported in the in, in the press. Uh, the approach that uh, Wind Resorts has had, you you sort of alluded to that in your opening remarks, uh, Chair. But I will uh, I will just uh, emphasize that uh, the commitment that they made uh, to keeping their employees for this uh, period um, is uh, it's nothing short of uh, remarkable. They're paying them in full and they're also paying out of pocket for what would or ordinarily come uh, from uh, customers in the form of uh, tips. So I just want to mention that that, has, uh, that is one thing that really stands out uh, to me in the past few days and I didn't want it to go uh, on this. Yes, and it's, that's a very valid point. I, I, I do know, um, I hope that we remember that we have recognized that in the past and I know that our um, communications director, um, Elaine Driscoll, have inclu has included it in, in uh, the, the public um, uh, blog notes that she uh, distributes, but it is no short of remarkable. Um, it's extraordinary that um, Wind Resorts has been positioned to be able to extend to all of their employees, about 15,000, I believe, Enrique, you can correct me, to um, keep them um, on their, not only with respect to benefits, but their salary and their tips. Um, and that right now, that commitment is through May 15th. Um, and if I'm right, and anybody can correct me, for our area, that's about 4,000 or so employees. Is there a better number? Well, well I think that's a good uh, proxy. Uh, it may be more than that, but uh, uh, I think uh, obviously they are um, they are counting on, um, you know, effectively acquiring a lot of uh, goodwill. Uh, a lot of loyalty from their employees, perhaps being in a good position to restart operations uh, quickly. Um, and again, uh, it's, it's, it, it's a testament to their uh, financial capability um, and, um, and uh, to their commitment to the, to the community in many ways. Yeah, 
I, I think I also saw that CEO Maddox recognized the, the cost um, to uh, the entity to retrain everyone. Um, that cost can't uh, be equal to all the goodwill that they build with their labor force. And so um, I, I know that uh, many of the employees have, are echoing their thanks uh, um, uh, among all of their entities. So I'm glad that you brought it up. Any, uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, I just wanted uh, to mention I had a great chance to join Director Vander Linden and Teresa Fiore yesterday on a conference call with the uh, uh, with the Game Sense team to see how um, the, their ongoing work, even during the suspension of operations, and had a uh, a great presentation by one of the Game Sense employees. So it was just good to reconnect and see everybody uh, still hard at work and preparing for uh, the eventual reopening. So it was a great call and thanks to Mark and Teresa for including. That's great. Any other comments? Barring none, do I have a motion? So moved, move to adjourn. Second. Okay, we'll call Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Chair votes yes. Thank you. And everyone be safe. Five zero. Thanks, Shara. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.